Today, we will show you how to complete your Dockside Wizard setup for a Garmin Retrofit Autopilot from a connected Garmin GHC Autopilot instrument. The Autopilot is an existing drive unit not sold by Garmin. For this video, we will be using a Reactor 40 Mechanical Retrofit Solenoid Core Pack and a GHC 50. You will need to have the Autopilot installed before you can perform the Wizards. Please refer to the Autopilot's installation manual for instructions or have the Autopilot installed by a certified installer. Failure to install and maintain this equipment in accordance with these instructions could result in damage or injury. You can complete the dockside wizard while the boat is in or out of the water. The boat must be stationary when performing the wizard. You must provide rudder movement clearance to avoid damage to the rudder or other objects. Use caution to avoid injury caused by moving parts. To begin, press the three dots in the lower right corner of the screen. Then select Autopilot Setup. And then Autopilot Installation Setup. Read the warning and press Yes. Then select Wizards. Then select Dockside Wizard. Next, select Begin. Select your vessel type. For this video, we will be selecting a power planing hull. Select the drive unit class you have installed. Select other when using a third party drive unit. You will need to consult the manufacturer of your drive unit to determine the drive unit voltage, max current value, and clutch voltage. Providing incorrect drive unit information can damage your drive unit. Select the voltage approved for your drive unit. We will be using a 12 volt drive for this video. Now select the maximum current value for your drive unit. Select next. Then input the clutch voltage. Select off if your drive does not utilize a clutch. Select yes or no, depending on if you have a shadow drive installed. This is not required to be installed with the system. A rudder sensor, such as the Garmin GRF10, is required for retrofit autopilot installations. You must calibrate the rudder sensor. First, turn to full starboard. Next, select OK. Now, turn all the way to port. And select OK. Center the rudder using the diamond symbol at the bottom of your screen. It will turn white when the symbol reaches the center. The autopilot will take over the controls for a short time as it calibrates when you press begin. Select Begin when you are ready. Select Next. Next, you will need to complete the generic drive tune. The autopilot will take control and cycle the rudder back and forth a few times. Center the rudder and select Begin. Select Next. Now we will set the steering direction. Use the arrow keys on your screen to move the rudder to port and to starboard. You will want to watch your rudder to ensure it is turning the correct way. Select the switch direction button if the controls appear to be backwards. Move the rudder again using the arrow keys to ensure it's working properly. Select Next when you're done with the steering selection. Now you will select your speed source. 
Select tachometer if you connected one or more NMEA 2000 compatible engines to the NMEA 2000 network. If you did not connect an NMEA 2000 engine or GPS device as a speed source, select none. If the autopilot does not perform well using none as the speed source, Garmin recommends connecting a tachometer through the NMEA 2000 network or using an external GPS antenna as the speed source. Select GPS as a speed source if a NMEA 2000 tachometer data source is not available from one or more engines. Garmin recommends using an external GPS antenna mounted with a clear view of the sky to provide reliable and accurate GPS speed information. Select Done once you have verified the information on the Dockside Wizard Review is correct. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please subscribe to the Garmin Support YouTube channel and visit marinesupport.garmin.com.